Hey, welcome back. Uh, we got very few mistakes by JT today. And we have more time than usual in the WTF because I usually over talk in the other segments and it nibbles away and makes this segment like two minutes so Frankie can't poke too much fun at me. So I'm going to filibuster a little bit here. Um, but no, uh, some great news just in to my phone, an email from our CEO, Chris Runny, the guy who invented and grew this whole network here from scratch. And uh, as I have mentioned many times, Newsmax is the fastest growing cable network in America. Okay, kudos to our CEO. Um, but press release today uh, tells us that uh, Newsmax TV surpasses Bloomberg Television and C-SPAN in key ratings and sees their biggest weekly viewership audience in 2019. Newsmax TV had a total reach of 2.6 million households compared to 1.6 million for Bloomberg TV. And uh, Chris Ruddy, our CEO, says this is like a major milestone. Absolutely. That's great news. Big, big news. Absolutely. Big news. Uh, yeah. It must have to do uh, with the addition of Greg Kelly. People started watching. They must be talking about us here yeah. where he says our content is resonating with Americans across the nation who are hungry for a fresh alternative to Fox, CNN, and other news channels. Also noted the network will make major lineup changes announcing new programs in the coming weeks and months. Yeah. This week, Newsmax announced, announced the launch of primetime show Greg Kelly Reports, hosted by none other than Greg Kelly. So. With, with such great uh, numbers, you'd think Newsmax wouldn't be so late in paying us. Congratulations. Uh, 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 um, um, congratulations to uh, us here at Newsmax. Absolutely. All right, John, a couple of uh, breaking news items and then one item I want to follow up on uh, from the story that we started at the beginning of the show. Uh, breaking news just within the last hour, 12 jurors, 12 New Yorkers, have been chosen uh, as the Harvey Weinstein jury. So that case can get started with opening arguments probably as early as Monday as the jury has finally been selected in the Harvey Weinstein case. Now, this is an interesting case because Weinstein's legal, came, uh, legal team first tried to get the judge to recuse himself. The judge said no. And then they tried to get the judge to let them change venues to a place that, uh, I guess, wasn't so difficult for him to get a fair trial. The judge said no to that as well. Great. So it's going to be tough. Uh, but according to Matthew Mary, who knows his way around a courtroom, he was saying the other day that he thinks uh, they might have he a shot. He can get acquitted. I, I, I thought that was strange, but I guess we're looking at the media barrage. And, you know, me personally, I haven't dug into all each and every last claim. Um, but Matthew Mary and, uh, you know, I heard Arthur Idala on uh, some local radio station. Um, I'm not familiar with him. Yeah. Um, and he was saying that, you know, he's having a hard time, very little time to select the jurors. But, you know, he thought they were going to have a jury where Weinstein could get a fair shake. And uh, while I think he's probably going to be convicted, you know, the legal minds that we know come here think he has a shot. So All right. we'll keep our eye on that. Uh, the other item that's breaking, John, is that uh, it's just been announced by Canadian Prime Minister Justin Trudeau that each of the families of the uh, Iranian plane crash will each get $25,000 from uh, the Canadian government. Uh, th that's unfortunately for them, though, Canadian dollars. So that adds up to about 19000 U.S. dollars each. So there's that. Uh, all right, and John, at the beginning of the story, beginning of the show, I told you about the story of a man who stabbed his father, and New York doing what they do, they let him go without holding him for bail, yep. and then, shockingly, he went out and uh, sexually assaulted and murdered a 92-year-old woman, and I told you that we learned that this person was in the country illegally, and how ICE begged New York City, put a detainer request on this guy. Put a detainer on this guy. Let us deport him. New York City said, no, we're a sanctuary city. We don't do that. Now uh, the, act, the, the director of ICE has issued a statement saying the policies of the New York mayor make the city less safe. If you're going to have a sanctuary city policy, just own it. It's crazy. It's yeah. crazy. It's just crazy. All right. We got criminals we can't keep in the jails when we do catch them uh, here in New York and San Francisco and other sanctuary cities. Uh, they won't even turn him over to the feds to yeah. kick him out of the country. And now a 92-year-old uh, American citizen is dead because 
we couldn't throw an illegal alien out. And uh, very good news for all you Saudi nationals. As of today, you can once again start training at American military bases. So please avoid uh, committing any future acts of terrorism as you did in Pensacola. Yeah, that, that would be helpful. Uh, I don't and, know why uh, we keep... I don't know. I just don't understand why we keep doing stuff with right. Saudi Arabia. Right. But. One country has never attacked us, on our own homeland at least, and we assassinate their generals. Another country murders American citizens on our own military bases, and we say, yeah, come on, keep training. Uh, All right, a couple of errors, John, before we run out of time. Thanks. You indicated that the show that uh, Fernando Uribe is involved with was politically correct. It's actually politically direct. And uh, you didn't mention that uh, Mayor Pete will not be attending the U.S. Senate impeachment hearings. He's another major Democratic candidate. Tiny, tiny errors. No error for you to tune in Monday, same bat time, same bat channel for another week of Liquid Lunch.